this service is your service. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is our healing banquet service. It's also a special communion Sunday. A banquet is simply like a buffet where you take whatever you want. In the first service, we began a, series, a teaching that will run in this Sunday today, just for today, um, connecting our healing rights in redemption. Connecting our healing rights in redemption. We were able to see that the word of God is the balm in Gilead. Jeremiah 8.22 says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is the head of the daughters of my people not recovered? When the balm is available and the physician is available, nothing can stop your healing. And today, the physician is there. The greatest physician is here. His balm, the word is available. Nothing will stop your healing in Jesus' name. Remember, his balm, the principal balm of God is his word. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Not some, all their destructions. Anytime the word of God comes, it brings light. And when light comes, darkness gives way. That's why when the light of God's word breaks forth, also it causes your head to spring forth speedily. Isaiah 58 verse 8. So we are repositioned by redemption above all principalities and powers. If you are born again, child of God, you are seated in the heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and minds. So what you oppress others shall not be able to oppress you in Jesus' name. Colossians 1.13, the Bible said he has, he, has, he has translated us from the kingdom. He has brought us out of the kingdom of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He didn't just leave us like that. He delivered us from the hand of the devil and he didn't leave us at his mercy. He brought us by translating us into his kingdom. The kingdom of is their son. And in this kingdom, it's because Jesus is a living stone, you too. You, as he is, so are you. No more breaking down in Jesus' mighty name. Please come with me this morning to Luke chapter 5. I will take my test. Luke chapter 5 Verse 17 And he came to pass On a certain day As he was teaching That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law Sitting by Which we had come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem And the power of the Lord Was present to heal them The power of the Lord Was present as he was teaching to heal them. And this happened on a certain day. I want to announce to someone here that this is your own certain day. Yeah. And certain miracles happen on certain days. Today you will receive certain miracles. Yeah. As at a certain day, he was teaching and preaching. And Jesus has not changed. Jesus is the same Yesterday, today, and forever. Everything that is not of God that followed you here today will expire in this place. Yeah. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil. Number one, every sickness is an oppression of the devil. Number two, Jesus is still healing today. Amen. <laughs> Healing them that we are oppressed of the devil. So whatever oppression that followed you here today will not go with you. Yeah. The same power to heal is available here because we are declaring Jesus here. I said something in the first service. When a patient goes to the hospital and a family doctor is around, 
If they also discover that the drugs are available, then such a patient is elated because the hope of recovery comes. Now Jesus, the greatest physician, is available here. Please get the teaching of the first service. We can go back there. Uh, who showed us why Jesus is the greatest physician in the first service. Please get the teaching of the first service. You may not read that in any book. Get the teaching of the first service. Glory to God. Now, Jesus is the greatest physician and is here. His balm is also available. Then nothing will stop your healing. Come with me to Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. Let's read together. Matthew 8 verse 16. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. If you are there, let's read one to go. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word. And hid all that we are sick. How many did he hear? How many? Are you among the all? Yes. Then your healing is settled today. Yes. He cast out the spirit with his word. He didn't touch them. But the words coming out of his mouth cast out the spirit. The same way the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. By the same words you are hearing today, I command every spirit of sickness and infirmity to excuse you. Amen. Jesus is the greatest healer and is a wholesale healer. Now that the balm is available, the physician is available, nothing shall stop your healing. Amen. Therefore, I decree every disease, every sickness, Oh, the Bible said he gave us power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Every sickness you are brought here today, every form of ulcer, every form of pain, every form of ache, tooth ache, body ache, neck pain, arthritis, rheumatism, HIV virus, every form of fibroid, hotness of the womb, every form of hormonal imbalance, ovulation or no ovulation, <laughs> just like what I had in the testimony. I decree an end to everything my father had not planted. That strange movement in your body is terminated today. That glaucoma is ended today. Oh, that eye and that ear that been bringing water, I command it to dry up in the name of Jesus. Every form of runny nose, runny stomach is ending right now in the name of Jesus. Every form of hepatitis, A or B, every form of fever, <laughs> yellow fever, typhoid fever, any kind of fever, high fever, I command it to die now. Every form of satanic siege against any of your sensitive organs, your liver failing, your heart, your, your, your kidney, any part of your system, pancreas failing, I command a restoration right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Including the thing that doctors can see, x-ray can see, y-ray can see, scan cannot see, but you know something is wrong. Whatever is troubling your peace, Whatever is troubling your head, I decree today they are terminated in the name of Jesus. My God will give you a clean bill of health. Oh, somebody here, your own may be a spiritual sickness. You don't even know. Anytime you sleep, they oppress you. They collect money from you. They give you something to eat. And all your body is now feeling hotness in the body. You cannot sleep. Now, I command it wherever it's originating from to be uprooted and terminated. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still in the healing business. He will heal you today. Yeah. Now come with me to Job 33. Job 33, I read 22 to 25. Job 33, 25 to 22 to 25. Yeah! 
he saw drawing draw it near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers the bible said if there be a messenger with him an interpreter one among a thousand so show unto man his uprightness then he is gracious unto him and said deliver him from going down to the pit i have found a ransom his flesh shall be fresher than a child's he shall return to the days of his youth. You know what that means? Restoration. Restoration. I don't know how any part of your system is dying or have died. Today there's going to be a restoration. Yeah. Why? The Bible said, I have found a ransom. Jesus is that ransom. I demonstrated that in the first service. Barabbas was exchanged in Matthew 27, 21 to 26 so that we can have Jesus so that they can crucify jesus and free barabbas we are the one that was freed a ransom had been found the price had been paid in the year 2000 to 2001 then i was serving in um abuja in durumi and god servant my father bishop david Oedipo, came for one of our nights he didn't plan it he came for a meeting in abuja and then decided to do the all night with us without knowing that a child had died before this time the mother refused to take the child back home. Prayers have been made. Doctors confirmed this child. Took her to one of the uh, offices upstairs. And the child was lying there. And God's servant came and read this scripture. Deliver him from going to the pit. Because a ransom had been found. And the dead child. No, without any prior discussion. Rose up. Deliver him from going to the pits now hear me that sickness is not unto death yeah. that sickness will not kill you yeah. you are the one that will kill it yeah. and today i join my faith with yours and we kill it in the name of jesus all signs give to them in the name of jesus tell signs give to them in the name of jesus pass a key to them in the name of jesus Diabetes is key to the name of Jesus. High blood pressure is key to the name of Jesus. High sugar in the blood is key to the name of Jesus. Sickle cell anemia is key to the name of Jesus. HIV is key to the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. The Bible says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Jesus took it and bare it on the cross. And it was crushed in the cross. It's no more there. You don't have it. There is no incurable sickness or disease with God. You don't have it. He gave us power to heal all manner of diseases and all manner of sicknesses. Look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease among the people. What was he healing? All manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. And listen to me, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today again, he will heal you. One day in our church in Sabo Kaduna, where I was privileged to pastor. Two young people wanted to get married. A lady and a man. And um, they went to do their own tests. And they discovered they are both AS, AS. So the parents said, marriage canceled. And they said, we love ourselves. We want to marry. Say, if your parents can't support you, you can't marry here. The only thing we can do is to pray. And they, block, they brought the, the results. Put hand on them. We prayed. God turned this thing around. Turn AS to AA. Now hear me. If one of them turned to AA, it's good. But look at God. Two of them turned from AS to AA at the same time. AS to AA. Today they are comfortably married. To, to show you, they gave another one year before they came to marry. 
When the church contacted, because we contact our own secretly, you go to where we want you to do it. I will send them there to go and do it. Not them now doing by themselves. Because after, after that, they came back with this all. The thing has turned to AA. When the church did our own, it was still AA, AA. Today, they are comfortably married. Now, hear me. I don't know the negative report you have brought here. Maybe it's in your bag as I'm talking now. Every day you look at it and you start crying, God, why me? So my own has ended like this. Now hear me. I command that result to be torn. Yeah. Whose report will you believe? If you believe the report of the Lord, the Bible says, His arm shall be stretched and stretched towards you. Now hear this and hear me well. Whatever you want to become negative will become negative. Yeah. Whatever is negative that you want to become positive will become positive. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think that is a better, is a better balance. Is it okay? If I tell you, okay, all the results turn positive. Somebody wants the, the, the doesn't want positive HIV. <laughs> Now, if I say all is not turn negative, somebody doesn't want the pregnancy test to turn negative. Amen. Glory to God. So the one you want to be negative will be negative. The one you want to be positive will be what? Positive. In Jesus' mighty name. So shall it be. Now, what we have decreed here, heaven has had it, earth has had it, and it shall be confirmed. You go and do another test, you will see it so. One day after after a healing school, I said, go and do tests. And somebody went back to do it. HIV negative, turn, HIV positive, turn negative. This is standing like that. I shall a testimony with us here. How a young man and a young lady got married and they, dis, they, they wanted a child desperately because people were already checking them and uh, what is happening. And in desperation, they went to the hospital. And the doctor gave a baby that, look, your wife cannot conceive because she had multiple fibroids. And they came to me and I said, this fibroid will turn to fine boy. <laughs> you know, sometimes we say some things, it looks like play. It looks like play. You know, one woman was sharing her testimony with me. He said, the prayer was so casual. But God has done it. <laughs> and as it is in the season of life the wife conceived almost immediately and when the boy was born baby boy not baby girl so five boy turned to five boy <laughs> to show you that the devil is mumu the woman just delivered the second one now a fine girl now the same person without any Five grand operation. I don't know what has been projected into you that is troubling your life and your system. Right now, I command the healing hand of God to touch you. You know, where you cannot touch, where doctors cannot see, what they can diagnose, God can see. Therefore, whatever needs to be uprooted in your life, I command them to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. <laughs> The price has been paid. So you can't pay it again. In Isaiah 53, 3 to 5, the Bible says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteem him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The grief they are talking about is representing sicknesses. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes ye are healed. Ye are what? Now, this is prophecy of Isaiah. Follow me. Jesus came here and they gave him. 39 strides, 40 minus 1. And it happened. He took it in his body. And medical science told us today that there are 39 categories of sickness in the world. So every stripe he took 
took care of one category of sickness or the other. Come with me to Peter in First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter 2, 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we were be that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were hid. Isaiah said, You are hid. Somebody came by name Jesus, took the stripes, and then Peter was referring to the same scripture. He said, Ye were hid. Hear me, 2,000 years ago, you have been healed. Therefore, whatever cannot stay in the body of Jesus shall not stay in your body again. <laughs> one day, I wasn't even the one that preached in church and uh, we had to bless communion and I had him as I normally hear. I was to bless the communion and God told me that he's about to restore somebody's manhood. Ah, I told them in church, I said, this is too hard for me to say now, but I will say it. Because I know before, if I don't say such things, when he tells me to say it, he will go and flog me at the back. I don't want to take such flogging anymore. So if anything he tells me to do, I will do it. Because he had told me, do your own, leave my own. My own is to say it, his own is to confirm it. I'm not the one that confirm it. If he likes, let him confirm it. That's his own work. He confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messenger. My own is to say it. If I don't say it, I'm limiting you. But if I say it, I'm giving him raw materials to perform the miracles. Hallelujah. So I said, look, God is restoring somebody's manhood now. He looked like Pleu, who blessed the communion, who took the communion and went home. <laughs> the following Sunday, a woman came up to share testimony. You know, there are some testimony. If people share it, you know that they have encountered God. Not, uh... You know what she said? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I'm one of the happiest women on the earth today. God has restored my husband's manhood in the open. <laughs> you should know that. <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Honestly, if it's the man that shared the testimony, I may doubt it. This man wants to deceive the wife. But if he's a woman, yes, it's correct testimony. Provable testimony. Now hear me. I don't know what has gone wrong. You too know he has gone wrong. You too know something has gone wrong. This is not me. You know it. This is not me. Oliya Bakazu Sakata. Every prostate cancer is healed right now. You know your body is not responding the way you used to respond before. Hear me and hear me well. There is a restoration right now. There is a healing right now. One young man singing in our choir got his intestine twisted. And the mother cried to the church after a midweek service. They've already booked them for, for an operation for, for, to, to spend over 400000 And um, I told her, let's talk to some of our doctors in church. We did. All of them came to the same verdict that this young man must be uh, operated upon or else he will die. And I say, madam, your son may not need this operation, no. Let's talk to God. And as we are talking to God, God said, bring out the mantle in your breast pocket. And I brought the thing out like this. I brought it out. I gave it to her. I said, go and touch his stomach. And the woman went there, touched his stomach, and the whole thing turned. For the first time in days, he went to the convenience. And doctor said, hey, it's not possible. I can Okay, let's observe him. Let's observe him. The following Sunday, he was in church singing in two services. He was the one that led the ministration himself in two services. Hallelujah. <laughs> now hear me. There is nothing too hard for God to do. Nothing is too hard for God to do. The good news I have for someone here is that affliction shall not rise up the second time. 
Now whom chapter 1 verse 9 He said what do you imagine against the Lord He will make an altar end Affliction shall not rise up the second time Affliction shall not rise up the second time Affliction shall not rise up the second time Hear me The devil has shot his last bullet He has nothing again to do He has shot his last bullet and I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever storm God has quenched in your head, in your family, I decree it will not rise up again. Amen. You have been doing surgery upon surgery. The doctors are telling you, come back again. The thing is coming up again. Hear me, you will go there, they won't see anything again. In a short while, I'm going to be showing us. I've shown us the balm of the world. Another balm is the balm of the communion. But before I show you what is in the communion, it's important that you know how to maintain your health. Because after you have been healed, how do you maintain your health? One of the ways you must maintain your health is by attending to the word of God. Attending to the word of God. You must give God's word attention. All this one you stay weeks, months without eating the word of God. You are making yourself weak. Proverbs chapter 4, 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my sayings. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are alive to them that find them and hurt unto their flesh. Anytime you find a good world, it brings heads to you. So, to be far from the world is to open yourself to sicknesses and diseases. Remember, I said in the first service, the word of God has both curative and preventive tendencies. Ask any pharmacist to explain that to you. Amen. Glory to God. It can cure you and it can prevent sickness. Another way you need to maintain your heart is to be a service addict. You must serve God. Serve God. For instance, in this soul winning endeavor we are involved in now, you must be there. You must be doing something. It's either you are there in the field, not talking to souls, reaping souls for the kingdom, or you are praying, or is there somebody say, I'm too busy, I can't pray. I can't. You can go and print materials and give those who are out there going. And then you are part of the joy. Because he that repent, and he that he that so and he that repent, you know, received wages. Exodus 23, 25 to 26, serve the Lord your God. He will bless your water and bless your bread. He will take away sickness from the midst of the that is clean bill of health. God will be the one servicing you. You know, there's a difference between service, coming to serve, uh, service and serve. Is it okay? Uh -huh. So God will be the one that that is servicing you, removing all the nyama nyama. Any truth bearing believer, God said he will prune in John chapter 15, verse 2. He will prune them. He will remove all the things that are not working so that they can produce more fruits. Don't you like God to do that for you? So be in any of the service you need, serving God genuinely, not going there to cause trouble. Is it okay? If you cause trouble for someone else, when you reach your trouble, your turn, somebody else will cause trouble for you. That is a, is a seed. Glory to God. <laughs> so be dear and serve God well. Make sure things are moving well wherever you are. Make sure the one that you put in your hand should not fail. You know, we are serving God as in a body. If anything goes wrong with any part of your body, the whole system will suffer. Two of us. He say, hey, my hair is not important. He say, look at how small it is. Let them pull one by force. By the time the place is paining you, God forbid, let the uh, will not come. Say. By the time the thing is paining you, you discover your whole body will not be, you will not even sleep. You won't do other things. So that's how we are. We have a body of Christ. So if you are not doing your own side, the whole body will suffer. May the body not suffer because of your own part. May the body not suffer because of my own part. In Jesus' glorious name. So we must be up and doing. We must be up and doing.
You must be up and do it. You are not doing it for man. You are doing it for God. And God said he will take away sickness from the midst of thee. He will bless your water and bless your bread. He will not allow you to suffer miscarriage of any kind. Nor, cast, nor be barren. No, he said he will fulfill the number of your days. Which means longevity with vitality. <laughs> Glory to God. Number three, you must eat right and exercise properly. Eat right. It's not everything you say you should eat. By now you should know what is good for your body and what is not good for your body. Especially free things. Because it's free, you want to consume everything. No. Show some restraint, discipline. Find out from doctors, most of the sicknesses we suffer is from what we eat. What you eat. So mind what you eat. Is that okay? If you need to go and study more on that area, you need to consult dietitian to help you eat right for your age. Please do. You know, before when we see somebody with big stomach, we think that is healthy living, a lie. Somebody is trouble. <laughs> it's a sight properly also. Somebody say, but that one profits a little. That little may, may be something. No? Is it okay? Glory to God. Also, you need to be a fellowship addict. Fellowship. Psalm 84, verse 7. They go from strength to strength, each and every one of them appearing before God in Mount Zion. Now, if you keep yourself away from church for one week, for one month, find out what will happen. Something follows you here. Because when you come here, this is not your house. When you come here, there is the blood of sprinkling that sprinkled on us, punching out things that are not supposed to be there. There are innumerable company of angels here. There is the spirit of judgment made perfect. This is the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. Hebrews chapter 12, 22 to 24. A research was conducted in the year 20, 2001, published in May edition of Reader's Digest. Reader's Digest is a magazine that has been there for over 60 years, so they can't be talking rubbish. By unbeliever doctors. And they came out with three powerful communicators. <laughs> they said, number one, that believers that do go to church always say, don't fall sick. And if they fall sick, they don't stay as long in the hospital as those that don't. And number three, they say they add at least seven more years to their lifespan compared to those who don't go to church regularly. May God give you understanding. These are unbeliever doctors. They did a research and they came out with this. You can go and make a research. Go to any library and make a research and search out what I'm talking about. So you don't know what happens. Have you not discovered sometimes you come with weakness and when you are going back from the church, you are going smiling. Hallelujah. Strength surging here and there. That is why never in your life miss any service. You don't know what God is doing for you. Never. Never. That's why for me, I better come late than I didn't come at all. <laughs> I better come late because I must come and carry something from the, his house. Glory to God. It's better I come late that I didn't come at all. May the Lord strengthen each and every one of us to fellowship with him. Amen. Now we can still push it further. Have personal fellowship with God. Apart from the general assembly. Because the Bible said in Hebrews 10 25 that you should not neglect our gathering together in the general assembly. Now, how about your personal fellowship with God? Can't you see any time you genuinely fellowship with God in his word? Fellowship with him in praise and worship. Don't you see how refreshed you are? Have you ever noticed that? It's one of the ways to maintain your head. And of course, in the first service, we talked about joy. Please be joyful. Be joyful. And if I may add to it, work in love. Help me tell you, never walk in love. If you want to be healthy, walk in love. Bitterness, offense, 
Unforgiving spirit, malice, embitters your destiny. If you read Hebrews 12, verse 15, <laughs> the Bible said something. Looking diligently, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. If you fall short of the grace of God, you'll be disgraced. Lest any root of bitterness spring in forth, defile you. He said, yeah, by some have been defied and tormented. He don't want to, you don't want trouble in life. You don't want to be tormented. You don't want to be defied. Don't buy the way into bitterness offense. How I feel bad when I see in church, the same church, some people are bitter against themselves. The same church, some people cannot greet themselves. The same church, some people cannot eat in another person. Go and find out. The other release, all of them, they can eat together. Yeah, you can. If you eat, if you say, I mean, one kill. Oh, God forbid the blood of Jesus. Blood, amen. <laughs> now, today, after this service, you have to go and forgive those people you've been carrying in your heart. The thing is holding you down, the thing is tormenting you. Did you see that brother that refused to, that man that refused to forget and uh, forgive um, the, a fellow servant? The master put him in the hand of the tormentor. The tormentor is a devil and he can torment you with any kind of sickness. Don't buy into it. Walk in love. Acts of the Apostle 24, verse 16, Paul says this Herein do I exercise myself to have a conscience that is void of offense towards God and towards man. Live free. Live free. I was teaching them in the Bible school on Friday on the principles of faith and I was talking something on unforgiveness. And the woman was there. She says she, she doesn't sleep. And if she ever wants to sleep, she has to sleep with one side because this other side in the night, pains everywhere. And I was talking about forgiving others. I demonstrated it to themselves. And she didn't hit her. And she, for the first time, she let go. Inside the class, not go and come back tomorrow. The pain she'd been carrying left her. She came out to share the testimony in the class. Can you imagine what she's been suffering all this while? That is pain of unforgiveness. <laughs> pain. There are many people carrying many sorrows, carrying pains because of the people that hold it in the heart. Somebody stole your money. Thank God he didn't steal your life. Somebody ran away with your goods. Thank God it wasn't your life the person ran away with. In as much as you are living, the Bible said a living dog is better than a dead lion. Even though you cut a tree, the Bible said, look, wait, it will spring again. By the scent of the water, it will come again. They may have messed you up. They may have really done bad to you. But why must you carry the heart? Please turn your heart to harvest. Turn your heart to harvest. Hallelujah. Let the person go. Not because of the person, because of you, so that you can get to where you are going. Remember, picking way saying more than no go sleep, into no go sleep. So the more you hold somebody and you are praying, God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. All you are saying, God, I'm holding this man, you to hold me. <laughs> so if you want to go, you let the person go so that you can go. Honestly, many sicknesses people are, are really suffering is because of bitterness of soul. Unforgiving spirits. Offenses. But may God heal you today in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is in the communion? <laughs> I so prepare to take that right now. Because that's another principal balm with which God heals us today. What is in the Holy Communion? The Holy Communion is actually a mystery of the kingdom package for our health and vitality see that in first corinthians eleven thirty. the holy communion also confers supernatural insight to us it's eye opening when he opens your eyes you can see what is behind the veil in the world and when the world enters you light comes and when light comes darkness disappears look chapter 24 30 to 31 as jesus was with them in Emmaus, with two, the two disciples, and he broke, broke the bread and gave to them, their eyes were open that they knew him. They knew him. So when you eat this one, you begin to know the word of God. 
And when you know the word of God, according to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22, he said, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my saying, keep them in the midst of thy heart, let them not depart from thy eye, for they are light to them that find them, and head unto their saying, unto their flesh. So, when your eyes are open to the world, you discover that you are eating head. Remember, the Bible says, in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish, that's King James, New King James and Amplified Version said, I pray that you be in head, even as thy soul prospereth. So the more of that word of God you take in, the more you prosper and the more you live in head. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? But you need your eyes to be open. He said, open my eyes. Psalm 118 verse 17, that I may behold wondrous things in your law. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Psalm 119 verse 18. Psalm 119 verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things in your law. Hallelujah. So, the communion helps to open your eyes so that you can see wondrous things. And when you see wondrous things, begin to live a wonderful life. So, what is in the Holy Communion? The Holy Communion is made up of two things. The flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So for the flesh, which is simply the, the, the bread that Jesus said, when you bless it, in the market it may be living or living, when you, but when it's blessed, it becomes the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's actually the power that neutralizes poisons in our body. In the first service we saw that is the rod that consumes Every serpent eating and buying and selling in your body. Now, let's see this. It neutralizes the poisons in our body. So, the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ is actually is it an, 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 is it antitoxicant. It neutralizes the things, the evil, poisonous things in our body. Second Kings chapter 4, 39 to 41. The source of the prophet were sitting in the potent and there was. A white guard there, and they put it there. They saw poison. I said, Oh, man of God, there is death in the pot. And what did man of God do? He said, Bring me a meal. That meal is the communion, it's the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, And they brought the meal, and he dropped it inside the pot. And when he dropped it inside the pot, the poison was neutralized, and the earth and said, There is no more harm. Now, hear this anytime you take this flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ and put it in your System, your stomach, your belly is like a biological pot. Is somebody following me now? If you don't understand, go and ask uh, people in science. When you, when you, even no matter how you cook your food, when you put it in the stomach, say it will cook it the second time. That's why when you get to the convenient, when the thing comes out, it's very hot. Smoking. Why are you pretending as if uh, you, 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 you even though you both say it's the same thing. <laughs> Glory to God. It will come out hot, true of us. Okay. Which means it has been cooked somewhere in your stomach. So your stomach is a biological pot. So when this one enters your biological pot, it will neutralize every harm there. Anything buying and selling there, it will neutralize it. You will not be sick again. In the name of Jesus. Also, it is a superior, a superior to the manna in the wilderness. Jesus said, this, this is the bread that came from heaven. And the bread that came from heaven is what he gave to us. And what he gave to us was his flesh. And what did they eat in the wilderness? Psalm 105 verse 37. He brought them out with silver and gold. There was no feeble person among them. For 40 years, no feebleness. If you have to send some children to enter house plus, you, you will carry you will carry, you must carry first aid bus. Sending 3 million people on a round of 40 years, no first aid bus. He must have made a provision. What provision did they give? It was the manna they were eating. Everything was inside the manna. Everything was inside the manna. Everything that will keep them healthy. There's no woman that did CS in the wilderness. No one had runny nose. With all the wild animals and wild mosquitoes that were eating them in the wilderness, none of them suffered malaria. Don't tell me, eh, eh, because, I, because the place is sunny. Anytime I come out in the sun, I eat to break down. You know, the devil will give you excuses. Eh, it's because it's raining, there's a mosquito everywhere. But for wilderness, they were eating 
mana and no more, no malaria so as you eat this one <laughs> whatever will not allow you to live they shall be flushed out in jesus name what is in the blood the blood is the life of christ leviticus 17 11 the life of the flesh is in the blood so when you take the blood of jesus you take in the very life of christ and whatever cannot stand jesus cannot stand you remember i said whosoever eats my flesh and drink my blood he will dwell in me and i will dwell in him john 6 54 also the blood makes you to share the same blood group with christ jesus so we can live, live like him it makes you to share the same blood group with jesus <laughs> hallelujah yes because you dwell in him he will dwell in you the blood of jesus you know the blood of jesus is, is aa actively active so any sickle cell challenge is destroyed here right now in the name of jesus you share the same blood group with Jesus. The blood group where sickness cannot come in and tamper with. That has high immune system. Hallelujah. Do you know that? Hi. Okay. You are making me to talk too much this morning. Now, go to, back to your science. There's what you call white blood cells. WBC. How many of us know white blood cells? You know what they are? They are antibodies. They fight, they help your immune system. They fight, you know, things that are not wanted in the body. Do you understand? That's ordinary blood, the ordinary white blood cell. What makes you think if you take the blood of Jesus, it will not fight whatever shouldn't be in your body? Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? And finally, the blood of Jesus can form a defense against all our source of the wicked. Hebrews 9.14 If the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of the hair are sprinkling, don't clean, sanctify it to the purification of the flesh, how much more will your help live with the blood of Jesus that was eternally offered without spot, purge our conscience from every dead work? So the blood of Jesus, when he enters, it will purge you. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 2, the Bible said, almost all things are purged in the law by the blood. Almost all things. How many things? How many things? Therefore, whatever need to be purged for your heads to be restored, I command them to be purged. Be healed. Be restored. If you are serving God, please note you're an ambassador of Christ. And every ambassador of Christ is entitled to heads. Therefore, your head is restored. Yeah. Every planting of hell in you is uprooted now. Yeah. That strange movement in your body is terminated now. Yeah. Now that they will ask you, what do you have? You say, Pastor, they pay me here. You don't move here. Now here is there now. Every such movement, I command them, known to you or known to you, I command them to be terminated. Yeah. Rise on your feet. We are going to pray in a short while, but before we do, um, I want to give opportunity to everyone here that is not born again. And um, after this service, we're going to be having practical deliverance. Practical. Now, if you are here, you are not born again. You are cheating yourself. You know why? Except you are in Christ Jesus, crises are inevitable. Except you are born again, you are a food for the devil. Because every unregenerated soul is a dust and will return to the dust. And the dust is the natural food God has signed and not that numbered for the devil. <laughs> so, you want to be free, you need to be in Christ Jesus. For whosoever the Son of God sets free, he shall be free indeed somebody is here you say i want to be set free i want to be born again i want to be a child of god i don't want to be a dust to be eaten by the devil anytime he likes please put your hand on your chest pray this prayer of salvation with me somebody else is saying i i give my life to christ but i can't understand no peace no joy yes you may have lost your salvation because 
of pressures of life, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, but you can return back to him, let him return to you. And somebody is struggling with certain evil habits, and you know that without Jesus Christ, that will continue. But if you can give him a chance, he will break that yoke in your life. Why not turn to him today? You want to turn to Jesus, you want to be one again, you want to rededicate your life to him, please put your hand on your chest, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name now in the book of life. I am born again. I am a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Please pray that prayer with me wherever you are. Wave your hand to Jesus. Pray that prayer with me. God bless you. God bless you for your sincerity. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you come to church with. Walk to the front of the altar right now. Please come, come the way you are. Jesus loves you the way you are. Come to him the way you are. Please come, 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 come. Come to him the way you are. Create in me a clean heart. Beautiful Lord. A renew a right spirit within Please come, 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 come. He loves you the way you are. Come to you the way you are. Don't be shy. Come into him. Come, 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 The Bible says, Whatsoever three my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. Father, stretch forth your hand and hear me now. Approach anything you have not planted in me. Go ahead and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever you have not planted in me, let it be rooted out. 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 Jesus. Help me, help me, help me. Jesus, set me free, set me free. Approach whatever you have not planted in me. Jesus, give me a clean bill of heads. Restore me and I'll be restored. This is about you go towards my right. You are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. Jesus, restore my head. Heal me of my wounds. Heal me and I shall be healed. Deliver me and I shall be delivered. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, ancient of days. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' glorious name. Please, you come here with your invitation card where you wrote your prayer request. Quickly, quickly, quickly give it to us. We're going to pray on that right now. Everyone, every other person, lift up your hand to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever you do shall be forever. Therefore, every sickness, every disease you have destroyed today shall not raise their ugly head again. 
No one here will go for a return match. Jesus permanently destroy everything buying and selling in our lives. I will decree everyone here, whether you've been enjoying clean bill of health before, you've not been enjoying it from now, each and every one of us will begin to enjoy, enjoy clean bill of health like never before. You will live to celebrate your health status. Sickness will not take your life. You will not service your head with your money. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be restored. In Jesus' glorious name. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for every prayer request that been made here thus far. We are already hearing testimony. Somebody said he was here. He wrote, God, I want my sister to be married. Within the same week, the sister was, in, was proposed to. Now, Lord, every desire of anyone here, including the one that bring it right now, I command them to be answered. Yeah. Every desire of every man, every woman that been collected right now, and the ones here, I decree in the name of Jesus that this prayer answering God at work here, will answer them in Jesus name my God will give you your desires because he's able to do beyond what we can ask or think. beyond what you have written God will give to you in Jesus mighty name